I'm so glad you're here. And uh, could you tell me about a very complex work? And it's called Confusing Tapestries. Yes. Um, and, and it is a complex work, but it is also, can I call it interactive? It's very much interactive. Uh, and in fact, the, the reason it's interactive is because um, what I'm thinking uh, about in this work is how we can have a new interesting conversation about history, recorded history, recorded facts, and how some of those may have seemed true when they were issued and broadcast, but history and the passing of time has turned them over into possible lies. The work that I'm making is really about um, thinking about the radio as a democratic medium, a radio for the expression of people's voices, people's voices um, screaming or crying or, or hankering after truth um, and wanting to express their deepest health desires. Radio in the last century represented something of a platform for truth-telling, particularly for liberation movements like the African National Congress, which is now the ruling party in South Africa, uh, where those parties were uh, underground. They were forced to um, be demonstrating and working to let people know about what they stood for from the margins of society. They were criminalized by the apartheid state. Um, as a result, they saw radio and the platform of radio as a way to broadcast their truth um, and to build their audience uh, and to increase understanding about what freedom stood for. 30 years later, um, after the democratic dispensation of 1994, the ruling party is still broadcasting using the same rhetoric, the same language. But in fact, um, the movement itself has turned away from the founding principles, many of us believe. And so that rhetoric has turned into some form of uh, lie, some form of alternative truth. So they are saying one thing, but actually performing quite another thing. So this idea of the confusing of tapestries, but fusing tapes, fusing the modalities um, that they've used to tell lies um, uh, and to turn the truth into lies. The proposal is a bit is a bit about how um, a thing may be true today but won't necessarily ring true 20 years from now because we do not remain the same. And it's about how tape keeps a record, but that record becomes um, uh, sullied, it becomes almost spoiled by uh, exposure to the sun, exposure to reality. Um, and I'm using a recent event that happened in South Africa, uh, which is being called the Insurrection, where a group of people decided to go and demonstrate for the release of um, the former president who was sentenced to a prison uh, term because of corrupt, corrupt activities. And the way the members of that movement articulated it, it was, this is a person who was telling the truth, he liberated us and now we want to stand for him. The courts and the legal system are not um, being fair, not telling the truth. But in fact, they were using the same rhetoric that he uses, uh, which is uh, overturning what in fact is the case today. And the presentation is led by a few uh, key voices in South Africa today, some of whom were asked to comment on the insurrection. But what they're trying to do is to diminish the seriousness of the infraction, the seriousness of this, uh, uh, the meaning of this insurrection. And they're basically trying to tell the public, this doesn't mean very much, so not to worry. In fact, I think it's a symbol of things that are yet to come, the rumblings that are coming uh, to the fore, which have been papered over, glossed over, obscured, they've been hidden, uh, but in fact they are inevitably going to come up and rise to the surface. And I think what we may see 
might be more difficult to deal with than the insurrection. So speaking about the insurrection almost like a fairy tale, speaking of the insurrection as a children's story, is something I'm proposing we are doing. And that makes us complicit in the project of uh, turning the truth into a lie. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm making the work. To activate it, I'm going to perform the role of an interviewer, and I want to invite a member of the public to come and tell me a truth that they've recently experienced that turned their understanding of the world upside down. Um, hopefully it will be a recent truth. I don't know what people will speak about, but I think it will allow us to have a window into what's happening in people's lives here on these streets in Berlin. And that will coincide with what's happening in the streets in Johannesburg, in Durban, and in Cape Town today. So the, the meaning of the work is how to bring the Vox Populi onto the stage. And you mentioned a fairy tale, which is actually um, part, as I understood it, uh, of the exhibition, yes. but it's also the radio composition that yes. you made for this project, right? Is it the same piece? Yes, it's the same piece. Um, and in fact, my intention was initially not to have it on the radio. Uh, it was only for the exhibition. But then the curators of the radio program heard it, and they said, why can't we add this as well? because it speaks to the piece that I did make for the radio, which is about um, the inferno that stares back. Uh, and here in the radio works, I'm thinking about the quote from uh, Nietzsche, who threatens that if you look long enough into the abyss, be careful, because the abyss might stare back at you. And I think what's happening in the world is we are seeing um, evidence of the abyss Perhaps it's not yet fully exploded. And the deeper we look into the abyss that is the world of polarized um, habits and politics, we will see just how frightening it is. And we will see how complicit we are in this project that is um, really manufactured and, and invested in violence and um, the separation of people according to class, according to race. And, and also according to um, gender, in, in certainly in the sense of the history of South Africa. And what I'm proposing is uh, what's coming might be frightening, but we have to look at it together. Um, and it, it's in the looking at it together, it's in the collective practice, that we might find some, um, some possible uh, incremental solutions of how to live inside of what is really a, a troubling world that is um, occurring. Are you, so uh, in this process there is very much history. Yes. Um, is it also actual politics, like the upcoming ele elections, which uh -huh. you are referring to in a way? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 coming, the, the coming elections are you know, a fact of life in South Africa. Um, whatever happens in this election, the understanding of politics and power will inevitably change in South Africa. This is the one year at the end of the 30-year window where South Africans are asking new questions about who to trust in the political sphere. Whether we've put our trust in the right people, whether we trusted for too long, and whether we were too willing to go with the project of the propaganda. These are all questions that are up in the air. No one knows what the answers are going to be. But I suspect after the elections, uh, our country will be slightly different. South Africa is just one of the countries that are having uh, very key uh, elections this year. Senegal just went through a very important election period where we discovered something we didn't know about the former government and now there's a new transition and they have to fight for that to happen. The United States is facing a very um, uh, interesting election where people are not quite sure what's going to happen, but the word on the street is um, the unimaginable might in fact happen. We're seeing all kinds of election results across Europe indicating that uh, power and relations have really shifted. Some don't think for the greater good, um, the question is then, what do we do about it? 
and I guess for me the proposal is this this is a year um, that marks a very different mood globally to what the 90s indicated to us. The 90s, remember, is around the time that the wall came down in Berlin. There was a different kind of euphoria, a hope about the future. The 90s was the period of uh, Clinton in the US. There was a euphoria about the future, people coming together and um, working together for the common good. The same was happening across South Africa and other African states. Very similar things were happening in Latin America. It was a time where humanity felt like we were holding each other together and we were saying we've gone over the worst of how we mistreated each other. We've come from out of um, the world wars, out of the, the Cold War, and it was a moment of thawing and a moment of uh, better relations. Even though not everyone agrees, we had techniques, we had modalities for talking with people we don't agree with. It seems like 30 years on, we've reached a point where people don't know how to talk to people they disagree with fundamentally, ideologically. And that indicates the abyss. And that's what the works on the radio are asking us to think about. What are your strategies as an artist um, to, to show what you just um, uh, uh, told us? So um, how do you make make that apparent in, in the installations. The, the piece titled uh, An Inferno Stirs Back is a, an underscore of what might be termed a moment of crisis. But I'm inviting people to speak about anything that has touched them in recent time. What they choose to speak about is up to them. It might be something positive. It might be something beautiful that they saw happen that they didn't expect to happen. In fact, that would really work well if it was juxtaposed with a horrific sounding underscore. My, my intention is to always find a way of saying more than one thing at a time. Complexity is an interesting uh, question, and I find history, if you look at the detail of history, complex. It's confusing. Um, we come from a period where we used to believe that history was made by special individuals, talented, iconic figures, heroic figures. We, we are being told now that the big narrative era is over. The moment of the grand hero, the grand narrative, is in the past. Francis Fukuyama said uh, history has ended. Right? Now we're in a moment where we've got micro um, tensions, micro stories, micro meanings. And out of that we have to synthesize something that is um, worthwhile for us as a, as a species to hold on to. I think what that suggests is that we are, we're all cracked, we're all living inside of a cracked world and we have to work together to pull the cracks together. It's like what the, the Japanese called kintsuroko, this, this the kintsuroko, the, the art of the vessel that is cracked and you fix it with gold um, threads. So the beauty lives inside of the cracks as opposed to a perfect, um, a perfect vessel that wasn't damaged to begin with. We are damaged beings and the strategy, the strategy for me is often to look at our damaged nature and to try and mirror that for people and then to attempt to have a conversation about it which doesn't result in platitudes of black and white, yes and no. But it's about how the complex, the nuance, can keep us informed and patient with one another. Thank you. That is uh, wow. Um, let me ask you about the archive because um, I think it fits well with um, the question I had in mind about your work in, in the context of the uh, larger exhibition, yeah. um, some of the artists used um, archival material, worked in the archive for this project. And as yeah. I read um, you too, could you tell us about um, that part and maybe if it's possible related to um, the other work, I don't know. I'm not sure how it relates to the other work, but mm. I can tell you about the archive. Yeah. The archive that I'm working with is a brand new archive. Mm. It's in the process. 
and it's something that I'm in conversation with uh, the holders of the archive. And, and it's a privileged uh, position to be in. It's an archive that is being held and formulated together by the Nelson Mandela uh, Foundation. And it's also being held by the Human Rights Commission of South Africa. Um, and their intention is to gather stories about the ways that ordinary South Africans are fighting for their human rights on the streets, through the voting process, um, and they are making recordings of how people are feeling about what's happening in society. And some of it accesses intellectuals who comment on uh, recent events and try to throw forward what those recent events might be indicating about our metrics of um, how free people feel to express themselves and how um, close to constitutional um, rights people are able to, um, to operate their lives. Um, that archive is initially going to be mainly um, audio. I'm not sure whether it will grow into other media as well. But what I've accessed are the recordings that were made specifically about this moment of the insurrection. I imagine there will be other moments, historic moments, that the archive will then want to expand. So I'm looking forward to working with these two institutions. They are very important institutions in South Africa. The one was founded by our former president, Nelson Mandela. Um, and his foundation represents um, speaking truth to power because by the end of his life, he had turned himself into a spokesperson for um, health relief for people with HIV and AIDS. And at the time he was doing that, he was going against the official policy of the national government. So he was on the side of the protesters, the side of the activists. So in fact, it's, a, it's an archive that is, um, I think, activated by the voices of activists and it's about activism in African society and South African society in particular today. Thank you. Yeah.